I have a confession. The podcast that you're about to listen to, you weren't supposed to hear. In fact, no one was supposed to hear this episode. It is actually a podcast episode that I recorded on January 25th, 2020, when I had all of the big dreams, goals, visions, ideas for what 2020 was going to hold for me. And I have a feeling that like many of you, those dreams went out the window as soon as we entered a global pandemic. And the year 2020 was not what anyone could have expected, and it's certainly not what anyone hoped for. However, I'm starting fresh, as I hope many of you are too with the year 2021. And with that is this new adventure, this podcast that I have been dreaming about for a very long time. But my role is to be as authentic with you as I possibly can and to go on this journey of learning and growth with you. And so with that, I think we need to start small and to start small together, taking those baby steps to creating a life that we love. And so with that, who would I be to say, yes, be your authentic self if I don't let you see the rough around the edges? But you know what? As I was listening to it back, I kind of realized that despite the crazy year that we had in 2020, a lot of what I said in this first episode is still very applicable today in 2021. And so please be gracious with me. It is my first episode I ever recorded using my equipment. So I was figuring everything out and I am a little rough around the edges, but I hope you hear the heart of my message and that you will continue on this journey with me. Welcome to Drawn, the podcast that draws you in with stories of hope, healing, and even a little hustle while battling anxiety and depression. Think you have to wait until you've conquered your mental illness to start living a joyful, meaningful life? think again. Conquering your mental illness is part of living a life you love, and we're going to figure it out together. I'm Katie Roshetko, and this is Draw. One of my favorite quotes I actually believe is attributed to Mary Kay Ash. She is the founder of Mary Kay Cosmetics, which maybe many of you use or have used or know friends who use or sell the products. Anyways, the quote is this, fear is the result of thinking, confidence is the result of doing. And I feel like there are so many times in my life where this has been particularly true. And I am one of those type A planner people who do not like to do anything unless I know everything there is to do with that particular project. I don't like to start anything without knowing how I'm going to finish it. And so taking on a project like this, uh, starting your own blog, a podcast, a social media platform, a website, this is all completely new to me. And I am learning as I go. I do not have all of the answers. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is actually the first time I'm even using my recording equipment and I'm just kind of poking at buttons and trying to figure out how everything works. And so I do appreciate you guys bearing with me as I just kind of start at the beginning with where this podcast started and where this whole idea of drawn came from. And it really goes back to probably a little bit in 2017, very much so in 2018, when I was first diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And it was one of those things that I could tell you, okay, yeah, I'm anxious. Yeah, okay, I'm depressed at times. But to actually be diagnosed with anxiety and depression was something it took me a very long time to get comfortable admitting because it sounded so dramatic. It sounded like such a emotional thing that I'm Katie Roshetko. I felt like I should have my life much more together than that. And I felt like anxiety and depression, well, that was something that people who go through capital T traumas deal with, not me. I had a lot of things going for me that were really good things in my life. I was on the cusp of getting married to my best friend who I had been dating for over five years at this point. I had finally, you know, worked my way up into getting um, a job that I had really, really wanted to be a reporter for a local news station. And I had all of these things going for me. And that is when the weight 
of everything, I think, just kind of hit me. And it meant that I started to crumble right before my friends and my family's eyes. Um, It was a really, really hard season, and I'm going to go into so much more detail in, with all of that later on in many more episodes to come. But what I really wanted to touch on is that I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. I don't know what your faith is, but mine is very much rooted in a relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who I know has a beautiful plan for my life. And he does not let me or any of us go through things without a love and an intentionality for the outcome. And I think that one of the things that I have learned through this process of battling anxiety and depression, going to therapy and counseling and taking medication and being very open with some of my friends and colleagues and family members, the thing that has struck me the most is through my openness, I have kind of realized that there are a lot more people like me than I ever realized. There were a lot more people within my immediate circle that I had no idea were going through similar things as me. And so as I began to talk to more and more people, I realized that this whole hashtag and the stigma thing is actually very, very true. There is a terrible stigma around mental health and mental illness. And though I think we are getting so much better as we enter 2020, we still have a long way to go. And I don't mean just talking about mental health in a, you know, a TV broadcast news story segment, right? I don't mean, oh, you know, you're this famous celebrity and you come out and suddenly say, you know, yeah, I battle anxiety and, you know, the world will applaud you for your bravery and coming out and being honest and speaking your truth. All of that is well and good, but what does it matter if you can hide behind, you know, the curtain of social media or, a podcast or, you know, a website or an Instagram account and say, oh yeah, I have mental health issues, but you can't actually talk to your parents about it or you can't talk to your significant other or you don't feel comfortable bringing it up to colleagues. You have no idea how to even understand what you're going through yourself, let alone explain it to other people. And I, and I, and I think that is where we have such a unique opportunity right here with this pod podcast, excuse me, to really dial it in and say, let's have a genuine conversation, not, not a, a platform kind of podium type of conversation, but I mean like a coffee shop conversation. You know the kind of conversations that you have with, let's say, a girlfriend who she has been your best friend through thick and thin, and it has been a year since you guys have seen each other, and she's in town again, and you decide that you're going to go out and get coffee first thing in the morning when she arrives, and you end up sitting there and talking about the real, the raw, the nitty gritty for three hours. And you don't even know how that time passed. That is what I want to create here. You'll hear a lot of my story, but I hope to bring in people who are just like you and me, who deal with some form of anxiety or depression or mental illness in their own way, in their own daily lives. Because as much as I think it's great that celebrities are out there talking about mental health and there is true validity in that, it's also very unrelatable. You know, we can hear about, you know, Selena Gomez or Demi Lovato talking about mental health, and that is all well and good, but their pressures in their life and their situations, and as well as their resources, are very different than the average woman. And so I love them. I am inspired by their stories. But let's kind of dial it down a little bit and look at you and I and how are we dealing with our emotions and our feelings and how are we really empowering ourselves to live that purposeful and meaningful life that we say we want, but we often feel like our mental health and mental ill health struggles are really holding us back. And so that is where my quote comes in. Fear is the result of thinking. Confidence is the result of doing. I have thought about this platform and this podcast, this blog for a long time. Not that I had any idea what the topic was going to be or what I was going to write about or what it was going to be called or what I wanted the aesthetics to look like. Like, I didn't know any of that. All I knew is that God made me a teacher. 
He gave me a heart for people, especially young women. And he gave me the confidence, I'll use that word lightly, to know that this is something I want to do. However, I did not know what shape that was going to take. And so I have thought about this idea for a very, very long time. And as it slowly began to evolve into drawn, the fear started to sink in. The thoughts of who do I think I am? What makes me think that anybody would even care to listen to this? Why should I even bother? I already have a job. I, this isn't going to pay the bills. You know, what if people think I'm stupid? What if people judge me? All of these fears came in because all I was doing is thinking and I was overthinking. I told you I'm the type A planner person like I like to know exactly what I'm getting myself into. And right now I have no idea what that is. And so the fear is sinking in the fear that I won't even be able to figure out how to put what I am recording right now on a website so that anyone can even listen to it. I genuinely have that fear. I have not figured that out yet. I'm going to get on that. But the second part of that quote is confidence is the result of doing. That means that you will only be able to feel confident in what you know how to do. And that doesn't necessarily come from thinking. You can read all of the textbooks in the entire world about podcasting, right? And I'm just using this as an example because that's what I'm going through right now. You could read all the textbooks, look at all the websites, know the steps by steps. You could put a podcast online, but do you have any idea how to actually record it? How to make yourself sound kind of intelligent, kind of like you know what you're doing, you know? Um, no, probably not. You're going to have to figure that out. And there's no way you're going to figure out how to speak confidently into a microphone until you do it. You're not going to know really how to actually put your podcast online and how to build an audience until you're actually doing that. And that's what goes back to another quote of mine that I really love. Um, and this one is actually by John Maxwell. Sorry, name for his skating for a second. John Maxwell, he's a huge leadership author, Christian guy, amazing. And he was on another podcast of mine that I absolutely love, a podcast with the one and only Rachel Hollis. And he was talking about how knowledge isn't power, right? We have all heard that before. He said, you know, we've all heard knowledge is power, knowledge is power, right? Well, he flipped that on its head and he said, it's not knowledge that is power, but applied knowledge that is power. And I think that's where the doing comes in. You can learn all you want and read all of this stuff, but until you're actually doing the thing you want to do, you won't really learn and you won't get more confident in that. And so for the last probably four or five months, I have been thinking and I have let my thinking turn into fears as I have tried to write a little bit on my blog and just kind of thought everything sounded like crap. And I was like, there's no way I'm publishing any of this. Um, there has been fear in even hitting the record button on this podcast because it's just, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm in my little guest bedroom at what I quote call my office when really it's just a, an old kitchen table that I have my laptop sitting on. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm not going to get better at this until I hit the record button and then just try it. So there's a pretty good possibility you're never actually going to hear this podcast. I will probably not publish this podcast because this is very much a rough draft saved for my closest friends and family to possibly listen to and for me to keep in the archives of my computer so I can go back and listen to this one when I'm like, oh my goodness, I've recorded 100 podcasts. Let's go back to that first one and see just how bad it was. Then I'm going to listen to this. I might publish it later on in life. And it's just going to give me and everyone else a pretty good laugh, I think. But here's the deal. I needed to record this for me right now on January 25th. It's about... 4.15 in the afternoon, I'm drinking a glass of wine and I needed to record this right now because I have let fear of not knowing what I'm doing 
keep me from just trying, from just hitting the record button and talking. It is what I do for a living. Like I said, I am a reporter at a TV station. I am used to speaking in front of a microphone, but for some reason, I have been so terrified to hit the record button on this because this to me is very raw. It's very personal. I have dealt with a lot of really tough stuff in the last year. Tough stuff for me. Uh, Pain is relative. And so I don't dare compare my pain to anybody else's and vice versa. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that I'm going through, we all have experienced pain in some way and we've all had different reactions to that pain. And for me, my pain came in the form of depression and anxiety and I am still working through that. Just yesterday, in fact, I actually was very, very depressed. I had the day off. I The day before, I was very confident in all the things that I wanted to do and accomplish. And then the day came. It was a Friday and I just could barely get out of bed. I just wanted to lie in bed. I wanted to turn on some sitcom TV show like Friends and just kind of not exist. Like I just wanted to pretend that like, I didn't have any commitments. I didn't have to be anywhere or do anything and that I could just kind of, for lack of a better word, wallow. And I'm not even sure what I was wallowing about, but I was struggling so hard to find any motivation. I was walking down the aisles of Hobby Lobby, a store that usually gives me so much joy, and I was feeling like I was going to start crying. I have no idea why. I just felt that way. And so this is definitely something I am still struggling with. I am not speaking to you guys, you know, from the mountaintop saying, hey, look, I survived anxiety and depression. And if I can do it, you can do. No, I am literally walking up the mountain with you with no idea where the summit is. I have no idea what's on the other side of this journey. All I know is that I'm not the only one going through this. And so I really hope that if you're going through something like this, that you will find the confidant that you need to talk to, to let other people in, to let them know what you're going through. And maybe that's me. Maybe that's your mom. Maybe that's your best friend. Maybe that's a colleague that you work with. Whoever it is, my encouragement to you is don't try to walk this alone and that you cannot get better until you first start admitting that there's something not right. You know, that like this way that you're feeling is not normal and that it doesn't have to be your normal. Like this doesn't just have to be something that you deal with. This can actually be something that you in turn use as a way to thrive and to turn your life around and to figure out, you know, kind of where you want to go from here and that you're not going to let whatever it is you're going through stop you from living the life that you really, really want. And so that is where I'm at. I am wanting to build a kind of a community of people who are going through similar things each in our own way. Tough stuff. But with the idea that like we are stronger together and that through all of our pain and our anxiety and depression, we actually have the power to change the way the world looks at women who deal with mental health. Uh, Because there is, unfortunately, there is a stigma. It was a stigma that I'd always, you know, put air quotes around because I'd never actually experienced or seen it firsthand. And so all of that to say is that this is a platform for me to speak But it's also a tool for us to grow together, to achieve something that is bigger than ourselves and to really find that joy and purpose in our lives. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again, you do not have to wait until you have conquered your mental illness, whatever your mental illness is, you don't have to wait until you have conquered that challenge to live a joyful and purposeful life. You can do that right here, right now with all of the emotions that you're feeling. And I think we can do it together. Thank you for listening to The Drawn Podcast, empowering women battling anxiety, depression, and other mental illnesses, where I believe we've been drawn together to create a life we love. You can find more amazing content at my website, katierachetco.com, or follow me on Instagram at The Drawn Collection.